I now have the esteemed pleasure of introducing Mr. Ellis Jacob. And Ellis is a business executive and philanthropist. Um, as president and CEO of Cineplex Entertainment, he has established a strong Canadian movie theater industry, employing thousands in Canada and bringing, bringing the theater experience to mid-sized communities that were previously not served. He has also contributed to the Toronto International Film Festival in numerous roles, notably as a member of its board of directors. And in addition, he helps in the leadership of the Bay Baycrest Center for Geriatrics, the Baycrest Foundation, and Mount Sinai Hospital. And for someone whose grandmother was in Baycrest myself, I find it very touching that he's built a theater inside Baycrest as well. Without further ado, Mr. Ellis Jacobs. Thanks very much, and uh, I just want to say I'm not a lawyer and I have no notes. The only <laughs> thing uh, Ed and I share is we've both lost our hair from uh, being in business. So, <laughs> Anyway, I, I have a, a very uh, different background from most uh, Jewish executives in Toronto, and most of you will probably be surprised to know that I was actually born in a country, India, and in a city called Calcutta. So I'll spend a few minutes talking about that and what it did for me as far as creating Jewish values as an individual. I lived there for the first 16 years of my life. Uh, my parents were both born there and my grandparents were people that came from the Middle East. Uh, one uh, grandparent from Baghdad, the other one from Aleppo and Syria where all the fighting is going on now. And back then in the late 1800s and early 1900s, they came to uh, India because of the fact that there was very uh, little issues with Jews in India and they settled in Calcutta. And Calcutta actually um, at its peak had 7,000 Jews and uh, we had three synagogues. And one would say, well, you know, what's, what's so great about that? But one of the synagogues in Calcutta is actually the tallest synagogue in the world. And the reason it's the tallest is because when you lived in an Arab country, the synagogues could never be taller than mosques. So when they came to uh, Calcutta, they decided that they wanted to have the tallest synagogue in the world, and they hired a sc Scottish architect that basically built this synagogue with a, with a long sphere that went up into the sky, and that synagogue is there today. So it's an amazing, uh, and the synagogues there are still there, and they're all basically hi uh, historical sites. And why are they historical sites? Because the Jewish community there was just amazing. For example, if you were a Jewish student, you went to school for free. We had a Jewish girls' school and a Jewish boys' school. To this day, that school exists, and I took my wife and kids there, and what's unbelievable, from the 7,000 Jews when we lived there, today there are only 20 Jews, and they're all over the age of 70. However, there are 500 students in each one of those schools, and they all go for free. So you have Hindu kids, you've got Muslim kids singing the Hatikva because it's part of that Jewish school. <laughs> So it's pretty incredible. So uh, we ended up leaving, uh, I left in 1969 and came to uh, Canada actually for my sister's wedding and had all intentions of going back to uh, India because my parents were there. And uh, my sister got married and I said, hey, this is a pretty good place, uh, Canada, I'd love to stay here. So the first thing I did was basically uh, go to the immigration department and say, uh, you know, I'd like to immigrate to Canada. They said to me, well, uh, you're 16 and your parents aren't here and you want to immigrate? They said, that's not happening. So I said, well, how do I stay in Canada? They said, the only way you can stay in Canada is if you get a student's visa. So I said, well, can I apply for that? They said, well, you first got to get into a, a school or to a college before I can admit you. So I went over, uh, I was in Montreal at the time, went to the CGEP that uh, was just starting up its first year, and I went to the registrar, and thank God he happened to be Jewish, because at least he understood some of my values, and he listened to me, and he said, you know what, Ellis, I'm sorry, the applications were due in March, this is now end of July, I don't think I can let you in, this would be pretty bad. So I left and I uh, decided I better get my plane ticket to go back home with my parents. And about three days before I was supposed to get on the plane, he called me and he said, are you still interested in that position at the school? He says, can you come down and see me and bring your transcript with you? So I trudged over to the school and I said, here's my transcript. He looked at it, he says, I don't understand a damn thing. He <laughs> says, uh, but I'm letting you in, but make sure you don't let me down. 
And that was really the start of my life in Canada and uh, really made a difference for me. So when people ask me what's the most transformational thing that happened to you was the ability to, uh, uh, you know, being allowed to stay in Canada. And thank God for me, two years later when I was graduating and they were handing out the certificates, he was there and he handed me my certificate. He says, I guess you didn't let me down. So it's, to me, it's all about uh, you know, looking at what happened when I lived in Calcutta and the Jewish values that were created there and what we do today. Like Ed uh, you know, mentioned about a number of the things we do from a charity perspective. Even though Cineplex, you know, we employ 10,000 people uh, at our theaters, most of them are part-time, but we're really, really focused on a number of things and individually and also through the company. For example, we support the Starlight Foundation, for uh, young kids and their parents who are in hospitals, and we raise over a million and a half dollars a year for them. We also do a lot of charitable work in, uh, in the movie end of the industry with the Jewish Film Festival, the uh, Friends of Simon Wiesenthal, and a number of other uh, 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 places. So for me personally, I've been involved with the uh, UJA. I've been very involved with RENA, with ORT, and last year, uh, Ed and I uh, were co-chairs of the JNF event, which raised the most money ever for an event, a uh, Jewish event in Canada. We raised that, what, over $5 million, I think, for that event. <laughs> and this year, we are gonna continue with that as uh, they are honoring Stephen Harper, who's been a great friend of, uh, you know, the Jews and Israel, so. Ed and I continue to work on that to uh, also uh, give it a big boost. Turning over to business and, uh, and Cineplex itself, uh, I started with Cineplex uh, working in 1987, which was about 26 years ago. I worked for uh, two uh, individuals, Garth and Myron, uh, and basically never went into a company where there was that much chaos in my life. The first day I started, I walked in and I was hired by a friend of mine who was at the time the chief financial officer and he said to me, I said, why did you hire me? I don't have an office, I don't have a desk, I don't have a phone and I don't have a computer. What the heck do you want me to do here? He says, wait and see, you'll soon find out and I really did very quickly. But uh, what I wanted to also mention is the fact that I met somebody this morning at an event and he was uh, you know, probably your age and he said to me, he says, I really want to go off and start on my own because when I look at our organization, I'm so far from the top that it'll take me forever to get there. And one word of advice is you got to basically believe in yourself and make sure that you can continue on your path, believe in what you do and you will get there. Don't say, okay, there's so many levels above me. Because if I said that when I was getting to stay in Canada, I would probably be back in Calcutta, India today. So it's all about being, uh, you know, persevere with what you've got and believe in yourself, I think is really, really important. And probably another uh, thing that changed my life dramatically was about 11 years into working for Cineplex, I got fired. And I said, my God, what am I gonna do now? I have two young kids, a wife, and uh, you know, what do I do? And that really gave me a chance to step back and really look at things differently and basically start up. And that's when we started up a company called Galaxy, which builds theaters in small markets. And it was tough. I remember going to see Ed as a landlord and him telling me, what the heck do you know about building theaters and being in the movie business? But he gave me that break that got us started. So today, from that first theater we opened, we now have 136 theaters. We own 72% of Canada's movie market. And we are a company with a billion dollars in sales and $2 billion of market cap. So all that, all that was because of basically believing in our values, believing in people, and also being willing to give back. And I really, really feel it's important as individuals, we have to help each other. And we gotta make sure that we keep uh, together as uh, you know a group. I mean, I was brought up and uh, you know had mostly people who were around me were not Jewish because we were a very, very small community. But one thing for damn sure, we made sure everybody in that community knew about us and what we did. Who do you think won the war against Pakistan for, uh, for India? It was a Jewish general that won the war. Now, most people don't even know that, but it was a Jewish general. Who was the top uh, justice in, in India at the time? Also a Jewish individual. So a lot of the things that were done by these people really made a difference even though they were a small community. 
So I feel uh, personally, each and every one of you should basically be looking at how you can change what happens out there. Because it's always tough, you're gonna have bumps in the road, but at the end of the day, I know when I went to start Galaxy, everybody said, oh God, that's a stupid idea. Who's gonna go watch movies in Peterborough and Midland and Moose Jaw and all these places? You know what? They all came out because what they stopped doing was watching videos at home. They came to the movie theater because we brought them entertainment that they didn't have, and that was the difference for them. And we keep doing that every day as we move forward with our business. So I think I've done a lot of talking. Maybe I can open it up to a few questions, and thanks very much. Ask me movie questions. <laughs> so, speaking of movie questions, where do you see the future of cinema going? It's a great question because when I started 26 years ago at Cineplex, every friend of mine said that industry is going to be dead in two years. And last year we had our biggest year ever, both in sales and profit. And that's because it's still a social experience and people will want to come out and see Iron Man 3, which opened this past weekend. <laughs> and the only bad thing this weekend is the goddamn Leafs and the Canadians are playing hockey. <laughs> and I want the Canadian teams to lose soon so we can get on with our business. <laughs> so answering your question, uh, Basically, where I see movies going is there's going to be a day, and probably very soon, where you're going to buy a movie ticket, and you're going to own that movie forever. It, we call it a super ticket. You'll come to the theater, you'll watch the movie, and we'll deposit it in the cloud for you, and you'll own it forever. That's where I see uh, the movies going. It's not going to happen tomorrow, don't worry. <laughs> I was gonna ask a more sappy, serious question, sorry. Uh, what is the greatest piece of advice you've ever received? And if you were gonna bestow one piece on all of us today, what would it be? Uh, I think the most important thing for you is to uh, have the highest level of integrity and be uh, trustworthy because I can be uh, honest, I can tell you that in the last 35 years of working, there's only one person that ever quit working with me. So most of my executives have worked with me for 26, 25, 24 years, and that's all about trust, integrity, and working as a team. And that to me is, is everything. If you can get that uh, in working with people, it's the best thing you can ever have. So I understand you, you uh, know a lot about business and you know a lot about philanthropy. What I struggle with is knowing uh, which route is more efficient. There's something called a social enterprise, which is trying to make a business that has a social impact. Or like you, yourself, one could really uh, sell their soul for a little while, do business, and then give back afterwards. Which is the best path, or, or could they both be good? I think you've got to work on both together because they are intertwined. And I think as a company like Cineplex, uh, we've got, what, 72 million people that come to our theaters on an annual basis. So that's twice the population of Canada. And it's really important that we are socially responsible both from a philanthropic perspective and also how we run our business for our, for our stockholders uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And at the end of the day, you gotta remember, when you're uh, at the top, make sure you put your ego in your pocket because uh, there's no room for egos in running any business. Thank you. Firstly, thank you for coming tonight, speaking with us and having this conversation with us. My question is, uh, when you lost your job after 11 years and you had a wife and two young kids, how did you have the self-confidence to start a new business and risk that um, with your family on the line? What happened is I basically uh, didn't know what the heck to do with myself and took a trip uh, to Israel and, uh, and Turkey. And I was lying in the bed and I get a phone call from, uh, it was Robert Lantos at the time, and he told me I was on the board of Alliance and he says, hey, I'm selling my company. Can you come back and help me uh, do it? So I said, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna come back. So I went back and uh, helped him sell Alliance to Atlantis. And then Atlantis offered me a position because they said, you were so mean to us in this deal, we're gonna hire you to work for us. I said, but I really don't wanna work for you. 
I want to basically do this. This is a dream I had. I want to build theaters in small towns. And then I went to a number of individuals and, uh, you know, Onyx and Jerry Schwartz. Uh, basically, they were competing with the Sobies to back us. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll go uh, with Onyx and Jerry. And that's how we got started. And a bunch of uh, other individuals like Robert Lantos and and uh, Alliance at the end of the day, Alliance Atlantis also invested in the business and that's how we got started. And believe me, it was pretty scary. And uh, it was like, you know, driving a 12 year old car, not going on holidays, sticking to a very, very tight budget. Didn't take a salary for, uh, for a while, took uh, equity instead of a salary. And the first year and a half, two years, I don't think we made a penny and then it uh, basically, uh, started to take off, which uh, resulted in you know where we are today. But you have to believe in yourself because I'll tell you there were so many people that said this thing is never gonna work. It's the same thing that happened to us when we tried to buy famous players. Everybody said that will never happen. And that took a lot of teamwork from our people and <laughs> dealing with the government. It took us seven months, but we closed that deal at the end of the day. So hopefully it wasn't too long-winded for you. <laughs> Hi, um, sorry, your, your story really resonated with me because I was living and working in England for two years and thought that I'd come back here and everything was sorted and about three days before it all fell through. So I was going to launch um, a business in about two to three years and because everything fell through I thought um, why not start it now and so I've just like registered and taken that chance and I guess my question to you would be if you had to sum up the best advice to get people aligned with your vision in the most effective way, what would that be? I think a lot of times, even when I think back to people that invested with me, were people, you have to find people that uh, believe in you and people that are willing to commit money to you. Because I remember when I uh, put together the business plan to get started, I said to, for example, Robert Lantos, I said, don't you want to see the business plan before you put your money? He says to me, you are my business plan. And you know what that does to you? It makes you feel like you really got to work hard and perform because somebody else has given you their money to work with to create value. So from that perspective, you got to make sure that you've got the investors that you need and you basically have brought them on site to where your vision is long term. Because businesses don't make money overnight. It takes a couple of months, sometimes a couple of years before you get to that break even uh, threshold and turn it into a profit. Great, it's very neat to see the ties that bind both of your stories. Thank you. Thank you. The, the very amazing thing and the ties that bind are are knowing our roots and knowing where we came from. Both Ed and Alice spoke of that and. Uh, for us, we have the, the privilege to live in Canada and for us to think about our parents or our grandparents or even further from us. So the ties that bind are the roots where we came from. So thank you. And now, Orit.